meeting to order. Dr. Deegan, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Mr. Chair. Here. Dr. Here. Mr. Jester. <laughs> Mr. Jester. Here. <laughs> Ms. Clodfelter. Ms. John. Colonel Curtis. To any special recognitions at this evening? Nope, none tonight. No architect's report or departmental report. Okay, so on to your report. On to my report, under item A, um, we have consideration and action regarding the um, FY16 district audit, which is under separate cover. Um, and we have Ms. Mary Johnson, our auditor, and we're going to hand uh, the meeting over to her. Good evening. Um, just a few short comments for you this evening. The independent auditor's report um, has been delivered to you for the um, within the auditor's report. I will remind you of a couple things. Management is responsible for the preparation of fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with the financial reporting guidelines of the um, State Department of Education. And our responsibility is to give you an opinion on that presentation. As part of our audit, we do look at internal control, but the purpose of the audit is not to give you an opinion on internal control, and we do not give you such an opinion. One other thing you will note, because your financial statements are prepared on um, a basis of accounting that is required by the state, there is a paragraph that refers to the adverse opinion on U.S. generally accepted accounting principles. That is required because your report is available to the public, and it helps explain to them the difference if um, one report is GAAP versus one that isn't. It lets them know this one is not and is not intended to be. But we have issued an unmodified opinion on the basis of accounting that the state requires, uh, which is basically cash receipts and disbursements the budgetary basis. Um, one thing I did want to highlight that you probably have noted is that the uh, district did um, have an overall increase in net position of 9%, which is amazing given the funding um, cuts that occurred last year. So I think administration should be commended that you did that and you managed to accomplish that given everything that you faced. That was pretty, um, a, a pretty significant change. Um, that's about the only numerical thing I wanted to point out to you. Your overall cost of services actually went down last year, which helped um, um, bring that positive increase. So that is a good thing. Um, that was an excellent way. You did a good job of preparing for something you weren't prepared for. So um, there's one other audit report that we issue. It relates to our or two other reports. It relates to our work that we do on internal control and compliance be required by state law. Um, and again, that, that report in, is in the back of the document. The first one is on um, the government auditing standards and it does not um, require an opinion but as part of our audit we study internal controls in determining the procedures that we're going to perform and if we note anything that requires um, presenting to you that we feel like is a condition that you need to be made aware of we would do that within that report um, we had no such conditions at that level to report to you for internal controls um, that were material that were material um, that we considered to be a material weakness. Also, as part of obtaining our um, reasonable assurance that the statements are not materially misstated, we look at your compliance with state laws and regulations. And and again, we noted nothing that we need under the standards that we needed to bring to your attention there in that item. The third and last audit report is the work that um, we do on federal programs that's required to do for you because you spend more than $750,000 now. Um, instead of $500, they've raised the threshold. Um, the programs that we audited this, this year are identified in the, um, on page 58 in the schedule of findings and question costs. Those programs rotate year to year under the federal standards. And we had no items related to internal control or compliance of the federal programs to bring to your attention for those programs that we audited. One last item that I'll bring to your attention is in the separate letter, 
You'll note that we um, did bring to your attention some items that we noted within the activity fund related to the state law that requires deposits to be made within one business day when they exceed $100. That is a fairly common occurrence, especially with the number of sponsors that you have in your activity fund and the turnover in those sponsors. So, um, but we just wanted to make you aware that we did find some items that did not comply with that particular area of the state law. And with that, if I can answer questions, I would be happy to do that. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Accept the report. Yes, I guess we're going to have to okay. approve it. Okay. I make a motion to approve the audit. <clears throat> a second. Call roll, please. Mr. Jester? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Sherm? Yes. Okay, under item B, consideration and action regarding proposed revisions to policy CKDA tobacco use. And um, this is a. Um, and thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. No, yes, you are free to go. Um, so you've got to go to Ardmore. It's a long ways to go. Um, this is simply to update our um, our current tobacco policy um, to comply with um, um, statewide um, tobacco-free use. And I don't know if everybody remembers, but Lawton is one of the few first big businesses <coughs> in the state to do this. And I believe we were the first in the state, at least in this area, to, to deal with e-cigarettes and vapor. Um, but the idea is just to extend it. Um, the changes are... Um, Pretty self-explanatory. Got a little sidetracked when Ms. Johnson left. <laughs> I was curious about number four, which is a new addition about not accepting any money or donations or gifts. Is that is that what are some districts accepting money from tobacco company? Is that we actually yes, you know, um, Miss Ellis and I actually discussed and she researched whether that in, you know there's the um, tobacco settlement endowment trust T set yes. which schools receive money from that. We actually considered whether that was part of this consideration, which which is not. It's not. So, okay. You know, I think that's probably. And really, our practice is we generally don't work partnership with anybody who does anything our students can't do, right. so which would include smoking, alcohol, and just about anything else. So. Correct. I don't think it's an Im Im impedance, impedance for the district. No, I just I was curious. <laughs> but it must mean that somebody asked. Uh, someone, uh, evidently, <laughs> somewhere, so. somebody decided it was a good idea. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Jester. Yes. Dr. Bridges. Yes. Mr. Sharon. Yes. Under item C, um, and I'm going to go ahead and say item D also, we have information item, State Department of Education certified dropout report, and then immediately following the State Department of Education <coughs> ACE remediation report, and for that we're going to have Mr. Rick Owens. I uh, left a report. I see most of you you have it. Um, once again, the middle schools had no dropouts to report. That's why there's not anything there. And if you'll notice our district, we last year we had a 1.7. This year we're at 0.67th of a percent. So we've done quite a bit better. We had 152 last year, total number of dropouts. This year 40 and 72 were not, uh, 80 were not re-entered. And this year we only had 27. And then I have the same statistics by high school. You can see there. So we've done quite well. I'm sorry? What have you done to make the great decrease? Well, they're, they're really on top of it a lot more because of the bonus points for dropouts. And uh, I know, like uh, middle schools, they really work really hard to get it. You don't have that many dropouts anyway, but they want their attendance and dropouts to be up. And it's worth five bonus points if you can reach a certain level on the high school. So they really got after it a lot last year and, you know, they learned the system quite well. Is part of the documentation? Or? I'm sorry? Is part of the documentation? Yes, what the kids come out is, uh, you know, they get a GED and those count against us. But, uh, or they finish out the year, that means they didn't have enough credits or enough EOIs mm -hmm. to graduate. So that, that's documented. And some of them just move and they don't check out. Right. And, and that's where you get the re-entries. The ones that just leave and they'll get to another town, 
And then when that town sends for the records, then we re-enter them and, and withdraw them so we don't, they don't count as a dropout. So how's the, how's the trend been over the last five years? Uh, Do you know? Well, I've got two years. Yeah. That's, okay. that's all I have right now. I know we're above the state. You look down at the bottom of the cohort there is two. And last year it was the state was 1.7. So the state has gone up. Um, but our dropout has decreased since last year. Can I, I know we brought up this records thing before, you know, when they go out of state, you know, uh, is that been a problem? You think that a school would want records. Uh, I know that we, we request records. Do we find that there are states that really aren't co so concerned about well, where a child is coming from? If they do request them, but it's got to be in a timely manner. Okay. You know, and, and some of them will stay out, but some of the kids that are truly dropped out, the principals, I, I know I did, we'd get on the phone and call them if they were in town. We would try to find these kids to see if we could get them back in school or right. and get them up to date. But That's good. Unfortunately, they, if they don't request work records, they're going to be a dropout. Yeah. Okay. And on the ACE remediation, the ACE funding is cut. It's, there is no more ACE remediation as far as that's concerned because the state of Oklahoma did away with the end of instruction test. So the, even the ACE website will be archived within a few months. But we did have some technology funds that we carried over. Um, and what we did there was we divided those evenly among all seven secondary schools. And then at the bottom of that report, we had, uh, it, again, we used the ACE remediation funding for computer-assisted instruction. And then you can see the carryover the schools had from last year that they'll be able to spend this year. But most of our ACE remediation funding is for computer-assisted instruction. That, do the schools have to designate it for a certain thing or is yes, that this carryover ace remediation is and then there's above that is ace technology it uh -huh. has to be for software hardware and at the bottom we can use software for instruction <clears throat> okay so it is designated then i'm sorry it is designated where it has to go it is designated yes, okay. yes. that's it Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and add to Mr. Owen's um, comments. Um, a lot of people don't realize if a student does not finish within their four years, he or she is committed as a dropout. And we have a lot of students who are five or, and on occasion, even six year seniors, just like, um, you know, college students. And so one thing that's going on behind the scenes is there's they're drafting the new rules for ESSA and the state. Dr. Polk is on the committee with, with Rick's and the rest, rest of the educational services team input. And they've actually, now the state proposal at this point looks like they're going to start changing the dropout rules where a fifth, somebody that's with us their fifth year won't be counted as a dropout. So if a student takes five years or even six years, which occasionally happens to graduate, they won't be counted as a dropout in the future, which I think that's a good thing. But I, I, that's an example of our staff working behind the scene at the state level to really um, make sure the, the state does things right. So. All right, I'm moving superintendent's announcements. I have um, just three quick announcements. One is um, Lawton FFA um, <coughs> 2016 Food and Science Technology Team placed ninth in the nation and won a trip to um, the International Poultry and Egg Association Exposition in Atlanta. Wow. Right, it's a big deal. I don't know what they do there, but it's a big deal. <laughs> Um, United Way, I'm proud to say that our employees contributed um, over almost $66,000. Um, two buildings that we want to um, really do a shout out to, that's Carriage Hills Elementary, who raised 214% of their goal. And um, Washington Elementary increased their donations by 93% from last year. So almost doubled wow. their, their, rotation, their uh, donation. Um, and for those of you who attended the um, Lawton Public Schools Foundation Pillar event the other night, I appreciate it. Um, they um, announced $88,935.85 worth of grants to our teachers. We got to hear from a lot of those teachers that night, and they served good pizza, <coughs> so it was a really good night. Um, they, have, they have really, really stepped up the foundation. It's, it's really moving well. 
Um, I, know, I was walking by Norma's desk this afternoon, and I noticed she was getting her brand new desktop computer. If the board remembers, three years ago, we set up a schedule. We were going to do the classroom, the laptops, and now this year, we're actually replacing all the support or desktop computers, which means secretaries, principals, people that have a desktop. Um, so that's going through the district right now. That's a good thing. I um, also want to announce, if you remember Ruby Peters, she is our um, former appeal rep. Of course, Eileen um, rep talked to us recently. Ruby Peters just received um, the honor of being named as the statewide um, education committee chair for the, for the NAACP. So that's a big honor for Lawton and for Ruby. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and steal Mr. Sharams. You have before you two of the new, and we're working on the board member precincts, a very clear, high-definition map that shows you the um, attendance zones for not only the middle schools and the high schools, but each elementary school. Very, nice. very clear. There's no doubt. No crayons. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no Sharpies. It is amazing work, um, and I have to give the communication department, Lynn Cordes and her staff has worked with the University of Oklahoma. And Kim Elam, too, she said. And Kim Elam, yes, Kim Elam, she knows where all the boundaries are. She knows where everything is. Um, but we, are, um, we will own that as a PDF. Um, we're getting some big, big ones printed for different offices, transportation. But you can be seen down to the street level where the boundaries are, um, really for the first time since I've been here. And so it couldn't have happened without Ms. Cordes and her staff, so I want to give them a, a big shout out. Um, we will have those on our website as soon as they are um, com completely finalized. Great, thank you. So that's, um, <coughs> and that's all I have in my report. Does anyone need anything removed from the consent agenda? I don't. Entertain a motion. I move for the <coughs> consent agenda. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Jester? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. I guess there is no one listed, so I guess we wouldn't even call for one. Yeah. Well, in the, in the amended agenda, we do have an option. That would be up to the pleasure of the board. You need, if does anyone want. call for an executive session? You need one of Do we need it? Um, it'd, it'd be up to the board. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> do you want to do that? No, I don't need it. No. I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it either. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, so no executive uh, session. We'll go to your personnel report then. Okay. I'm going to item 13, superintendent <coughs> personnel report. I have item A, vote to approve the employing, promoting, disciplining, receiving act resignations of individual certified and support salary personnel listed on pages 72 through 73. Move for approval. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Jester. Yes. Dr. Bridges. Yes. Mr. Sharon. Yes. And item by item B, vote to approve the selection of an interim elementary assistant principal and training at Ridgecrest Elementary, and I recommend Ms. Pamela Snavely. Move for Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. So I'll read your personnel report. Consideration of any new business? I have none. Next regular board meeting scheduled Monday, December 12th here at Shoemaker. Any consideration of action concerning setting any more board meeting dates? Any we board? Come up with one for a report <coughs> from uh, Dr. Pierce. Yeah. Yep, I think that would be. I think it's timely. I don't. Um, would um, I could have Denise contact everybody and identify a, a date that would work? Okay. Since, since we have two missing, it might be difficult tonight. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Any board announcements? I would just like to commend uh, Mr. Owens and whoever else is responsible for this tremendous drop in the dropout rate. Right? I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's, to me, that's a big deal. Uh, just wanted to get that out there. I want to uh, wish good luck to Lawton High, who is in the semifinals for football, and the MacArthur Highlanders, who are in quarterfinals in playoffs uh, for both Friday nights. So good luck to both teams. Absolutely. Yes. Any other board announcements? Okay. Item 14, consideration of motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. Call the roll, please. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Mm -hmm.